Hey everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I am the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Clean Machine is an all natural plant based fitness nutrition company. So, why plant based and why exercise? Yeah, you hear me talk about it a lot because it really can make a tremendous impact on your overall health, especially when you can combine exercise and a whole food plant-based diet combined together. Uh, obviously getting enough nutrients in to support your muscle growth and weight loss is important. Uh, there are nutrients out there like omegas, like vitamin D3 that are not readily available in our diet. So it is important to include all the nutrients you can in a day to make sure you're getting all that. All right, this video is for informational educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. However, we are going to be talking about two studies looking at brain health, senile dementia. <clears throat> so dementia is a horrible situation where people lose their faculties, their ability to remember things, their ability to process things well, um, to think clearly, to function in normal everyday life. And it's heartbreaking when you've got uh, dementia that uh, and, and brain function dysfunction that falls into um, severe brain dysfunction. Now, can exercise and diet impact dementia? Well, let's take a look at two new studies because these just came out. The first one is July 27th. So it just came out a matter of about a week or two ago. And the, the one before that is June 14th, so just last month. Two studies in the last month looking at diet and exercise and how they impact dementia. Dementia is such a severe and disabling disease, really hard, not only on the person having them, but the families, the spouses, the, the family members, the sons and daughters, the children of people who are suffering with dementia, it can be, heartbreaking and, and a struggle, and it can last for many, many, many years. This is why exercise and, and diet are so important, especially once we get over 40, 50, 60, and into our 70s and higher. So let's look at the first one. So uh, I want to make it clear because a lot of people are saying, oh, that's just going to happen as we age. It just comes with aging. And this isn't true, and we know it's not true. And even in this study, um, I'm going to read it verbatim right from the study. Genetic factors account for less than 10% of all dementia cases. Instead, the development of dementia is driven by the same mechanisms as other chronic conditions, namely inflammation, dyslipidemia, which is saturated fat and cholesterol imbalances in the body, oxidative stress, insulin resistance, also known as type 2 diabetes, and an unhealthy gut microbiome. Now, what do almost all of those have? They're dietary related. Inflammation can come from our diet. Our diet is one of the biggest contributors of inflammation in the body. When you look at you know, it's, it's so funny when I hear people say, oh, omega-6 from plants is pro-inflammatory. <laughs> it's actually false. The omega-6 that's found in plants is anti-inflammatory. You heard that right. LA, which is the primary omega-6 found in plants, actually can convert to GLA. And LA and GLA or DGLA are both anti-inflammatory. Now, where the confusion comes in is that it can also then convert further down to arachidonic acid. Now, that's pro-inflammatory. But the body won't. The body controls enzymes that convert that anti-inflammatory omega-6 called LA to GLA, which is also anti-inflammatory. And then finally, the body controls how much of ALA of 
LA and, and uh, GLA omega-6 gets actually converted into arachidonic acid. Now, this is a good thing because arachidonic acid can build up in the muscle tissue, which is a good thing because when you exercise and you squeeze that muscle, it releases some of the arachidonic acid, and that's a cell signaler. It's telling the cells, hey, come on over to the muscle. Let's build and repair this. He stressed the muscle. That arachidonic acid that omega-6 is a good thing. That is good inflammation. So that is the inflammation that we want. When we injure ourselves, like you get hit and you slammed and it swells up, that's arachidonic acid happening. That is good inflammation because that's pulling things over, pulling water in there to protect it, pulling uh, white blood cells to make sure there's no infection there, um, doing all the healing and repairing. So there's a lot of activity that's in inflamed. It's getting larger, right? That is good inflammation. That is necessary inflammation that our bodies need. Now, when you eat an animal product like beef or chicken or even fish, you're, you're concerned. Well, fish is a little different because it's so high in anti-inflammatory omega-3s, but let's say chicken or beef or lamb or pork or any of those. What you're doing is getting preformed arachidonic acid. That's omega-6 that's already converted by that animal down into its pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid. So when you eat uh, animal products, you're getting the pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid from the animal. <laughs> when you're getting the plant omega-6, it's anti-inflammatory state and only gets converted on an as-need basis in the body and our body controls that. When you eat animal products, you're dumping this arachidonic acid, pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid right into the system and you have no control over it. The body says, wait, I didn't convert that. I didn't make that from GLA or DGLA or LA. Uh, why, are, why is all this? And that's where we can get systemic what's called systemic inflammation. That's where inflammation is just all over our body and our joints where it shouldn't be causing arthritis in our arteries where it shouldn't be causing placking, heart attacks and stroke in our cells causing inflammation where it shouldn't be, which is the saturated fats there. And, and that's leading to diabetes. So you see all these disease states are pro-inflammatory states and they're exacerbated by us eating these animal products getting this arachidonic acid in its pro-inflammatory state and coming into the body and causing inflammation. Dyslipidemia, lipids, fats, cholesterol. These are saturated fats and cholesterol that come from animal products. Yes, there's a little bit of saturated fats in some plant foods, but that's not something that we're eating generally every meal, every day, all day long, all the time. We're just filling our body with animal saturated fats with bacon in the morning, eggs in the morning, uh, meat in the, for our sandwich, bologna on a sandwich, and then a, a steak for dinner. You're just arachidonic acid, arachidonic acid, cholesterol, lipidemia. You're just causing these states that can eventually lead to, yes, you are a dementia. So let's take a look at that. And the, the other things are the insulin resistance. Again, that's saturated fat in the muscle cells causing insulin resistance and oxidative stress. What do you find in plants? Antioxidants, right? All the colored fruits, all the dark greens, all those pretty colors are actually potent antioxidants in plants. You don't get that very many antioxidants in animal products, some containing very little to none. So, and then finally, unhealthy gut microbiome. Well, what feeds the healthy part of the gut microbiome? Fiber only comes from plants. And what feeds the unhealthy bacteria? Saturated fats and animal proteins. I mean, every single one of those is inflammation, dyslipidemia, oxidative stress, insulin resistance, unhealthy microbiome. Every single one of those caused by eating animal products, every single one of them improved when you eat plant foods, especially uh, phytonutrient, polyphenol, fiber-rich, whole plant foods. All right, so let's look at the study. The study is, I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen. Since I've only got two studies, I'll do it right as we speak. <clears throat> I'll put it in the comments section, then I'll pull it up in the screen. So if you're watching on Clean Machine Fit, you can see it uh, up in the comments section. If you are watching from YouTube, 
at a later time, you can see it up here on the screen. So this is the name of the study, July 27, 2022. Um, the study was called Chores, Exercise, and Social Visits Linked to Lower Risk of Dementia. Now, this is pretty interesting because just visiting people in the homes, right, lifts their moods, lifts their spirits, re gets their brain active. Like, oh, somebody's coming to visit me. They get excited. They get and release all kinds of brain chemicals, which can help improve. Now, how much did the, the visits help improve? 15% lower risk of dementia. This is why it's so important if you are um, going into a nursing home or, or have a loved one that is in a nursing home to visit them and visit them awesome. Because you, the less stimulated people are with active conversations and social visits, we can increase the risk of uh, senile dementia. Um, so the second one is household chores. Now this is kind of interesting and this is my take on it, but household chores gives you two things. One, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. I feel better, the place is clean, I get something accomplished. So there's that reward, immediate reward feedback that you've accomplished something good, but also you are active in this. You are doing something, you are setting your mind, oh, let me clean that, let me get that fixed, let me do that. So it's keeping the mind engaged and active. And that decreased dementia by 21%. Remember visits, 15%. Active chores, 21%. Well, that's great, but what about exercise? And so when they looked at people who are frequently exercising, a 35% decrease in senile dementia and those that were actively exercising frequently, three to five times a week. So just exercise alone cuts dementia risk by over a third. I mean, that's such a small thing to just do a little bit of exercise each day, you know, 20 minutes of exercise each day, three to five times a week, and you are cutting your risk of dementia by a third? That's phenomenal. But it gets better. Now, this was a big study. It looked at over 500,000 people in a UK database, and the average age was over 56. Um, so really important exercise, reducing risk of dementia by 35%. Let's look at the next study though, because this one was even more impressive. I'll put it up in the comment section and I'll post the links to both in the comment section and on YouTube. Um, so you can see that on uh, my personal Facebook page or the Clean Machine Facebook page at Clean Machine Fit, as well as you can copy it right off the screen, type it into Google, and you can read the full study for yourself. Um, but this study had uh, uh, almost 4,500 respondents over 53 years of age, and they looked at it for 16 years. So this was a really long study. This was, makes it pretty impressive because one, it's a pretty good sized group of people, 4,440 people actually in the study, all over 53 years, but 16 years of following these people to see how well they did for um, uh, senile dementia. Now, I'm gonna read this right over, right from the study. Fruits and vegetables, may be the leading groups of food for improving cognitive function. Continue the quote, fruit and vegetable intake has been independently proven to reduce the risk of diabetes, stroke, heart disease, and cognitive functional decline. Independently proven, those are the words of the study itself. Fruit and vegetable intake. Okay, moreover, a high fruit and vegetable intake was associated with a decrease of cognitive decline by 40%. Just consuming higher amounts, not even completely vegan, just highest amounts of fruits and vegetables, four to five servings a day of fruits and vegetables, which is not much. I mean, I eat probably 20 <laughs> servings. I eat four to five fruits in my smoothie uh, for my first meal. So yeah, but just four to five 
servings of fruits, those with the highest fruit and vegetable intake, a 40% decrease in the risk of getting and maintaining senile dementia. I love my brain. <laughs> I'm so grateful for my having my brain and, and my ability to think clearly and function. And, and I'm, you know, uh, just in about six months, I'll be 60. So I want to keep my brain active. I'm enjoying life right now. And I'm enjoying the pinnacle of my career. Um, best place I've been in financially and and just loving living on the beach, just loving life in general, married to an awesome partner. Life is good. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to suffer through dementia right at the time where I'm getting to enjoy my life, getting to enjoy my health and fitness, getting to enjoy my partnership, my relationship, getting to travel, getting to do things that I enjoy. 40% just by consuming more fruits and vegetables. It's, it's not a big deal, guys, but 40% reduced risk for dementia? I do that in a heartbeat. Why would you not do that? Okay, but it gets better. So let's go into the rest of the study. So they said, well, wait a minute. What if you combined exercise, frequent exercise, regular physical activity with fruit, high fruits and vegetable intake? And I'm going to read it directly from the study verbatim because we're talking about a disease state here and we're not allowed to, but I can read from the study. The risk of cognitive decline decreased 63% when physical activity and high fruit and vegetable intake were combined. 63% reduction. This is phenomenal just by eating fruits and vegetables and exercising. This is showing us clearly that if you combine some of the other factors that contribute to it, obviously, if you don't have genetic factors, that takes away 10%. So now you're up to 73%. If you don't have physical brain injury, that's another 4 or 5% of people. You know, if you look at some of the other factors like smoking causing uh, senile dementia, you're close to getting, you know, a really high percentage of not having to deal with senile dementia in a lifetime. Now, I, I'm signed up for that one. I don't smoke. You know, I, I don't bang my head. I'm not a headbanger. And I don't have any uh, uh, disease states that might contribute to it either. I'm full physical health. But mostly it's diet and exercise. So simple, 63% just by increasing your fruits and vegetable intake and by exercising frequently. That's how easy this is. And it's why it's so important. Save your brain. Why work all your life and you get to the retirement age where you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor and because you didn't eat any of the fruits of your labor <laughs> or fruits and vegetables, you ended up suffering with poor brain health. Why trade that? Start eating high in fruits and vegetables. It's never too late. Some of this is, you know, reversible, treatable, changeable, simply by improving the amount of exercise and fruits and vegetable intake. That's why I do what I do because. I want you to improve your life. I'm feeling the benefits of 37 years of eating nothing but plants, fruits, vegetables, beans, grains, nuts, and seeds. Nothing but those plants for 37 years. And I am in, enjoying life to the, to the fullest. I'm in the best physical shape of my entire life. And I'm just about to turn 60. I want that for you. And all you have to do is... Stay consistent with your exercise, physical exercise, physical activity. And look, it doesn't have to be weightlifting. I love weightlifting, but that doesn't have to be it. It can be basketball, it can be tennis, it can be swimming, it can be anything that you enjoy, dancing even. Um, just be physically active on a regular basis, yoga, um, Pilates. There's so many different options for you to stay physically active, even walking on the on the beach, if you're fortunate enough like me to be living on the beach. But 
just living anywhere, walking in the park, playing with your uh, with your dog or your pet, um, you know, throwing frisbee. It doesn't matter. Just get out, be active, increase the amounts of fruits and vegetable intake, and better yet, just make it your entire diet, and you can enjoy healthy brain activity for an entire lifetime. That's what I want for you. That's why I share this research. These are two new studies that just came out this month. The research is really starting to state the same thing over and over. And I'll keep showing them just to reinforce this message of how important exercise and a plant-based diet can be. That's why I formed my company, Clean Machine, to encourage you to keep this amazing machine that we're born into um, clean, healthy, and fit. Thanks everyone for listening. If you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and please share so that other people can have access to this information. It's information that is empowering. You get to use this information to improve your life and save you and maybe even your loved ones from suffering through horrible things like dementia. Thanks for listening. Live long and prosper.